Okay, we're back with another SKN demo. And YouTube, I really, really hope you don't delete this one. The last one you left up, and we want to leave this one up because we want to showcase what it's like to run SKN for body skin. There are a lot, or at least a reasonable amount, of uh, plugins and panels and things out there for editing faces. And that makes sense. There's a lot of reason to edit faces. Most portrait shooting is some kind of faces, right? Well, if you shoot fine art nude or glamour or boudoir or um, even some fashion images, of course, then body skin is actually a big thing. And what we've noticed over the years is that even with all the new um, AI and everything else that's come out, body skin tends to be secondary, very secondary. In fact, to the point where we feel like it's underrepresented in terms of like automated editing. So I really want to show you guys today again with YouTube's blessing <laughs> because it's, it's just a bikini bottom. Relax, YouTube, um, to show you guys what it really does on that sort of thing. So we're going to run SKN on cleanup. Now, we have lots of videos on SKN, so you can check those out if you want to learn how to use it. But I want to show you some extremes um, of what we can do with SKN to give you an idea. Now, the masking capabilities is the first thing that I always like to show off. So we're going to hit play. We're not going to speed up the process because um, depending on your resolution, 16-bit versus 8-bit, you know, and the pixel dimensions are going to affect it all your computer speed. This process could be six seconds or 40 seconds, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, generally speaking, it's very tolerable in terms of, of workflow. It's not like, oh my God, this is such a hindrance, uh, unless you have like a 10 year old computer uh, or something like that. As you can see, I'm talking, it's recording, which slows it down. We're maybe in the 25 second range and here we are. So first things first, let's look at the mask. That's this little button here. Pretty good mask. We lost a little bit in the shadows right there, but we can try to recover that if we need to. Again, keyword, if we need to. But let's zoom in a little bit. Let's see what we got. Remember I said we're gonna go over some extremes? Let's talk about that. So right now we have the opacity of the skin cleaning effect at maximum. Okay, we're gonna take a smoothing amount also to maximum, and then we're gonna increase smoothing intensity. Now when you, you can choose any one of these settings, I'm gonna choose the maximum. It will reprocess the blur effect Okay, from the original image. So it doesn't just randomly add color or whatever. It reprocesses the blur effect, right? Same thing with the down here. We're going to go to secondary smoothing in a second, but let's go down to texture recovery. If I maximize it, you can see all this texture is being recovered. This isn't a fake noise texture thing. This is the real texture of the actual image. And if I choose a tighter texture, you see how it thinks again? It reprocesses from the original image. It reprocesses the texture at a different um, extraction radius is a type of frequency separation is what it is. Now, let's say I have it relatively tight, maximum texture recovery, and we're going to move our secondary smoothing to maximum as well. Now, turn that off and on. You can see it's ruined. In my opinion, it's ruined. If you zoom out, no one's going to believe that looks real. But why do we have it even possible to go to that level? Well, because everybody has a different style and flavor and taste. And there's something to be said for pushing it to the maximum and then taking the overall opacity down. Sometimes that is like the secret sauce of get to getting the look that you want. You overdo it and then you scale back the overall opacity. I'm not saying that's the way to do it. I'm saying it's a way to do it. Another sort of variation with all these sliders and things. A lot of people get confused. They forget that sometimes you want to increase everything and then scale it all back evenly. Other times, let's put it back on maximum. Other times you may want to use a little bit of secondary smoothing, not so much texture recovery, and the smoothing amount, bring it down a bit, uh, and then that's it. And then now we have a beautiful smoothing effect on the body. See that from, you know, don't get me wrong, Adriana has amazing skin, but you can just polish it up to that perfect sort of commercial polish, if you will, you know, that that kind of look that everybody usually strives for, right? Now, a lot of times too, when I do this, I might even mask out the face out of the SKN effect. And I do that manually, depending on the look that I want, depending on how much, you know, work I want to do on it or the style I'm after. But again, body skin is really where SKN shines through. And if you, you know, finish this process and then flatten and continue, um, a couple of small little heels or using the remove tool to get some creases gone if you really, don't, you know, don't want them there. But overall, that is the beauty of it is that flexibility. So again, you can also very do it very minimally. A lot of times you don't even do texture recovery at all. Um, you might just do overall smoothing and then you take the opacity down. 
See, you don't necessarily want to enhance the texture. You might want to just add some smoothing and then blend it in with an opacity. That opacity slider is on top for a reason. Very, very powerful. Use it, use it freely because I tell you what, sometimes that's exactly the style that you need. So once again, smoothing intensity is to use the original image to create that blurring effect, which blends all of those lower frequencies together. And then the texture recovery, of course, is an extraction of the higher frequency. So, you know, there's a lot of cool things you can do. Let's put it on maximum secondary smoothing with the lowest texture recovery, the tightest, I should say. Maximize it. And you can see with all the maximum smoothing, there's texture in there. Okay. But look at the shot. It's, it's a disaster. Here again, we make it that powerful in case you want to just take all the opacity down to find the look that you're after off and on. See that? Try both ways. Try working with the settings themselves. Never mind Luma compression, contrast, and all the other tools. But for the texture recovery, texture management, I should say, definitely try changing the sliders and the settings directly, but also seeing about taking the opacity back. A lot of times if you think, God, it looks so close. I, I really kind of like this. I wish, let me get the slightly more texture. There we go. And then a little less secondary, a little less recovery. You're like, this is, it's, it's there, it's close. It's almost what I want, but it looks really fake. You know what? Take that opacity down and usually you get exactly where you want to be. And that is where SKN really, really excels, like I said, on body skin. <music>